Welcome. I'm Chris Aguinaldo. I'm the host of Aloha United We Stand, brought to you by the Aloha United Way and Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness for issues here in Hawaii. And don't forget, you can join the conversation on Twitter at ThinkTechHI. I'm also there at Chris Aguinaldo, and uh, we'll also take a look at your tweets while we, uh, while we have the program. Uh, today, we're welcoming Hina Mauka, which is an organization that provides treatment for addiction recovery here in Hawaii. Uh, we'll have a couple of people from the organization in this first part of the program, and we'll talk to a couple of clients in the later part of the program. Right now, I'd like to introduce Ellen uh, Johnson, the CEO of Hina Mauka, and Erica Vargas. Welcome to our program. Thanks Thank for being here. Thank you Thank for having you. us. Yeah. Thank you. Now, Alan, uh, you folks have been in Hawaii, I understand, about four decades now. Uh, right. Could you give our audience who are not familiar with the organization what you folks do and what has, uh, how you've expanded in the last four decades? Yeah, so, you know, initially we started uh, as a volunteer program in the Hawaii State Hospital because in uh, 1969 mm -hmm. uh, it was illegal to be an alcoholic, and so they put you in jail. And so in 1969, Hawaii was the first state that said uh, it's a medical disease. So, but they couldn't just release you from prison because you'd been convicted, so they put you in the Hawaii State Hospital, and we started as a volunteer program until there was no more room, and then we separated and started our own services. So that's how Hinamoka got started, which is, and, uh, and today we still have a problem with a lot of addicts in jail. But we have uh, residential services, we have a 48 bed, we're building 16 new beds, we have, uh, uh, we have uh, two outpatient programs, uh, we also are in the high school, public high schools and public middle schools, full on treatment. So there. this is outreach, this is not just only adults we're talking about, but prevention programs well, for we, we have and the, outreach? The public high school and middle schools are actually treatment programs in those schools. We have a classroom, but we also do prevention as well separately from that. So, and we do a community-based adolescent program. So we're quite large with uh, 20 some sites, so we're spread out. So uh, these sites, uh, where are they? Are they throughout the island? Most of them are here on Oahu. Uh, mm -hmm. We do have our team, Tom, the manager of the adults, programs. Mm -hmm. We have a manager for our teen care as well, and teen care is spread out throughout the island of Oahu as well as on Kauai. So they're in a couple, of sc they're school based in, in Kauai. Oh, and we have 50 beds in the women's prison? Yes, and we have 50 beds. Erica, can you prison. talk about that uh, women's uh, prison outreach, please? Sure. We have uh, what's called a therapeutic community over at the women's prison, women's correctional. Um, we have the capacity to service 50 of the women. They're taken, you know, they apply from general population to get into our program. Um, and it's about nine to 12 month, months of treatment while they're incarcerated. And what's part of that? Uh, what, what do they go through uh, during those nine months? Is it, uh, is it really counseling or what, what sort of things are, are, are being done with uh, your, your clients? They're receiving one-on-one uh, -on -one counseling. They're receiving a lot of group uh, psychoeducation on substance abuse, also to address their criminal thinking. Uh, so everything is based out of um, curriculum, uh, e evidence-based practices. They also get, uh, you know, trauma work as well as so trauma treatment, um, as well as just general emotion management. You, the great thing about that mm -hmm. is these 50 beds are separate from the regular population. And so we develop a very trustful, supportive relationship. We build this whole new culture for this 18 months. It's really, uh, I, I, it's been, got national acclaim for what could be done in prisons and how it can be transformative. Now, Alan, I'd like to talk to you, and thank you for mentioning that and mm -hmm. giving a uh, history about how alcoholism was first viewed in the in the beginning uh, when you folks started. What is this um, uh, this perception that you, it sounds like that you're trying to change that in the beginning? Prison really isn't the answer, or within uh, you know back then and now treating those who who uh, who are like the women that you're walking through and having them address uh, you know their their issues of addiction. Why is it important to treat the person and not, not have that, okay, uh, that stigmatism of, of uh, 
a crime or, or, or prison. It's just treating the person and not, not saying, hey, we go send you to jail. That's not treatment. Well, how important is it? Well, it's extremely important because we, in the last few years, mm -hmm. we've done great science to know it as a brain disease. We now even have medication that help assist treatment to help deal with the cravings of that. As we begin to understand addiction versus abuse, we begin to see it is a brain disease and you don't have control of your brain. And it's kind of like this is that we have, if you're diabetic, yeah, you shouldn't be taking sugar or mm -hmm. white flour or white mm -hmm. rice, you're, and you know, you need to exercise. But once you have diabetes, now we give you doctor and medical care. We work. We give you medications for your diabetes, and that's not really happened in our field very well. That we don't consider it. That now that you reach addiction, it's a brain disease and it's a medical. You need medical treatment, and that would be a great response to doing that. And so what we're finding for uh, the federal government just passed three months ago huge legislation that says we are now going to use treatment instead of criminal justice in the federal you know, penitentiaries. And they're saying that, look, if you're doing some criminal activity because of your drug addiction, we took away your drug addiction, you're no longer a criminal. Versus are you a criminal with a drug addiction? Those are two different distinctions. So if it's the latter, then I think we could do a lot to not be so overcrowded. Specifically in Hawaii, uh, what are the levels that you see? I, I understand that uh, we have a very high crystal methamphetamine use. Well, what kind of level uh, of use do you see this abuse addiction in our population just here in Hawaii? Well, I have some yeah. of the numbers, so sorry. <laughs> it's the, uh, Don't worry. We'll, uh, we'll give to you there. That's a <laughs> <laughs> We're so, going to talk about how we treat and help those folks. Yeah, you, uh, that that's going to be, be all expert. yours. Yes, right. it'll be yours. So, uh, of course, uh, if you're talking about the people and w how much abuse, and it, it, it's, a, it's alcohol, it's huge. But if you're talking about how many people have an addiction and now need treatment, it's a, you know, the adults is 50% of that is methamphetamine. For the kids in the schools, so probably 50 to 55% of it's marijuana where they're having major problems with marijuana as kids. But for adults, definitely methamphetamine is an issue. So once, uh, you know, those get introduced into uh, people's lives, parents, teens, whomever, whether it is alcohol, whether it is crystal meth, marijuana, uh, what is the process of reaching out and getting, getting help? How, how does someone who, who says, you know, I've had it, I, I don't want this anymore, how do they hook up with you and how do you walk them through and get them into your care? Uh, we have great relationships with our community partners. Um, you know, public safety is always referring to us. We have a lot of the case management um, the agencies refer to us, um, and we have an open clinic. Uh, so you just walk th right through. Oh, where's they the have clinic? Well, it's right. Um, we have one based in Kaneohe and, right. and in Waipahu. So it's it's right at our treatment centers. We, you just got to walk in the door and say, "I need help," and someone hands you a packet, and that's how it all starts. It's pretty simple to get started. Um, and then we'll walk them through the rest of the process. Now, what kind of people are there? Uh, you, you, they walk in, who, who will they meet? Will they meet people like uh, medical professionals, counselors, folks like that? Or will you help uh, connect them? Um, well, we have our front desk, uh -huh. um, who is amazing at the job that she does, very welcoming, um, really embodies the Aloha spirit. She is just a regular person <laughs> that uh, works for us. So, you know, she's coming in, she knows, understands, she's, you know, been doing this for a long time and she can definitely help anybody through the, the getting started process. Well, but, you know, she just and, is getting you connected yeah, to, to everything. So now you have a counselor that has mm -hmm. master level degrees, has licensures, has a state certified substance abuse counselor. So this is not just one, one little space, it's not one little office. Once you're friendly staff, welcomes a person, they have access to all of this. Yeah, they have access to that. And then uh, today, you know, coming into treatment is way different than it was. I mean, I've been doing this for 20 years, so uh, years ago you were an mm -hmm. alcoholic and then we just said, okay, looks like you need treatment, come in. But today we need medical reports. People come in, they have diabetes, they have depression, they have PTSD, they have COPD, they have heart disease, kidney disease. So we're, we're one of the few facilities that's treating all of that. So now if you've got comorbidity issues, you've got to see a nurse, mm -hmm. You've got uh, psychiatric issues. You've got to see our psych psychiatrist. So that it can be it can be a process simple that you know you only have an addiction. That's pretty rare, or it can be a very complicated process, and we're going to need some time to and some medical evaluations to get you in the door. But the first step 
is you can walk into your your offices and uh, just say, I need help. <laughs> yes, that's it. That's it. Uh, wh how do we contact? What's the uh, website on that? Any any uh, address you want to give sure. out right now? Uh, you can download our application at hinamalka.org. Um, so, oh, so this is an app on the phone? The, well, no. Um, so on our website, mm -hmm. um, oh, we an have application. Yeah, the application is actually posted on the website. Uh, mm -hmm. Anybody can download it. Uh, you can download it yourself. If you're working with a case manager, they can help you fill it out. And you can email it, fax it in. You can walk it in. Um, but we're, you know, using all sorts of avenues to just get people in the door. How is that? A, lot, a lot of people who yes. uh, come to us through their family members. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, it really is. Or your physician who's saying, okay, look, yeah, I think you need some more care, and they're referring you to, or hospitals are a big one. They're saying, you know, this, you've been here a couple times. You know, you have major issues. You're using the emergency room a lot. looks like mm -hmm. you have medical issues, but you've got this drug problem first, mm -hmm. and you need attention for that. So we're way better at being connected to all those folks nowadays. It sounds like that you have a lot of community partners, folks in the community that you are working with. Um, I understand, you know, just talking about folks in the community who are supporting you. You have a fundraiser coming up. Uh, this is on October 22nd, your fourth annual Luau. Can you let us, know, our viewers, know more about that? Yes, uh, it's at Ko'olina. We have a uh, great band, Capena, and we have uh, Tony Okis for, for food. It oh, is that's a, good food. It's, uh, we got a lot of people that come out and support us. We have a lot of fun. It's uh, October 22nd, and it's a major fundraiser. Uh, a lot of people come to us, they don't have money for medication. Mm -hmm. Some of the people come are homeless, they don't have anything, and uh, this helps pay for all that. So the proceeds benefit. Uh the funding for all goes, these different things that we've talked about. We go directly to our patients, or mm -hmm. sometimes we call them clients, but it's really patients and what their needs are and how they need so much. Mm -hmm. and, and you mentioned some of them cannot afford some of these services. Yeah, so, you know, government helps pay for if you're uninsured, but with uh, health care reform, a lot of people have Medicaid or, or Quest insurance, but they don't have any, they don't have for just basic amenities. You know, and some people have got their family support, some don't, and so they need more. So really, uh, from what you're saying and of what I've read, is that the substance abuse, these addiction issues, go across all across the entire socioeconomic spectrum. They yes. do, although uh, we are seeing an upkick in, uh, you know, Oxycontin, you know, the, all the mm -hmm. opioids, the painkillers are coming, and now we're starting to see elderly people using methamphetamine which what we believe is happening is that uh, there's a certain a part of our population that has a sensitivity to addiction and you mm -hmm. may be elderly and you never really abused drugs so you never had a problem but now you have problems with pain and now you're taking too much medication you get an addiction and so now we're starting and then you mm -hmm. can't get enough painkillers so you move into your grandson mm -hmm. gets you on, hooked up with methamphetamine mm -hmm. and then you show up at Hinamalka Okay. So, so now we're treating grandma and grandpa. So uh, after the break, we're, we're going to take a break so we can hear more about our other programs and hosts here at Think Tech Hawaii. But after the break, we're going to talk to a couple of folks who have gone through your programs, correct? Yes. That'd be so great. please join us. Again, this is a short break. Thank you, you two. And thank you for watching Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha. My name is Josh Green. I serve as senator from the Big Island on the Kona side, and I'm also an emergency room physician. My program here on ThinkTech is called Healthcare in Hawaii. I'll have guests that should be interesting to you twice a month. We'll talk about issues that range from mental health care to drug addiction to our health care system and any challenges that we face here in Hawaii. We hope you'll join us. Again, thanks for supporting ThinkTech. Hi, I'm Donna Blanchard. I'm the host of Center Stage, which is on Wednesdays at 2 o'clock here on ThinkTech. On Center Stage, I talk with artists about not only what they do and how they do it, but the meat of the conversation for me is why they do it, why we go through this. A lot of us are not making our livings doing this, and a lot of us would do this with our last dying breath if we had that choice. And that's what I love to talk to people about. I hope you enjoy watching it, and I hope you get inspired because there's an artist inside you too. Join us on Center Stage at 2 o'clock on Wednesdays. Bye. Aloha. My name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Law Across the Sea. Please join me every other Monday to hear lawyers from Hawaii discussing ways to reach across the sea and help people and bring people together. Aloha. Hello, my name is Crystal. 
Let me tell you, my talk show, I'm all about health. It's healthy to talk about sex. It's healthy to talk about things that people don't talk about. It's healthy to discuss things that you think are unhealthy because you need to talk about it. So I welcome you to watch Quok Talk and engage in some provocative discussions on things that do relate to healthy issues and have a well-balanced attitude in life. Join me. Welcome back. I'm your host, Chris Aguinaldo, and this is Aloha United We Stand. Uh, before the break, we were talking with Hina Mauka and their uh, substance and uh, uh, recovery programs offered through the organization. We're joined now by a couple of friends of the organization. We have Alfred Ho'opi'i and Michelle Navarro Ishiki. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Now, uh, you two have been involved with the organization. Uh, I'd like to know uh, what your involvement is. Alfred, let's start with you. Um, I have been a client there. I was a patient back in 2002. Mm -hmm. um, and I went to the, to the program of with Hina Mauka. And, uh, now I'm, a, now I'm, a, <laughs> I'm an employer there. So I work there. You know, it's, it's time for me to give back, yeah, because I know, I know it's very challenging out there. Mm -hmm. And I wanted that change. So, um, going to treat me because I've identified that I had a problem. Now, Erica, in our last portion, said people just need to come to, to the organization. They need to reach out. What, what was your story of reaching out, and how did you know? How did it affect you? How did you know that you needed to put your hand on and say, I need some help? Um, I knew because uh, it took me, like, after I lost my mom, yeah, so I became very rebellious over my dad, and you know, I started losing a lot of stuff, and you know, one thing led to another. I got incarcerated, and I needed to find myself. So, when I was staying at the shelter um, at IHS, I reached out to this one woman named, um, and she told me she said, you know, she did an assessment on me, and then that's where my journey started. And two days later, I, I came. I became one of the patients there at uh, Hinamoka, and. I went through the program. I did everything was that was um, that was suggested to me to do, and I did everything possible because I wanted to get my family back. Yeah. How? I, how? What was that process? So, what did what, when you say what did they have? Uh, you did everything that they asked you to do. What were the things that you needed to do? Um, first, I did an assessment. Um, once the assessment was done, I went there to Hinamalco. They did another assessment with me and, you know, to identify what was really going on with me. And, you know, my problem was, was I had a drug problem, yeah. And that was taking, with that alone was, I was, it was taking my family away from me. So, um, being that I could identify that problem, I went through the program with Hinamoka. And eventually I graduated with them and with the VA. So, they call that what, I killed two birds with one stone, yeah. So. And that's amazing, you know, mm -hmm. and it, it taught me a lot and it gave me the person I needed to be and gave the brother that my siblings wanted to have back. So it was, a, it was a journey for me, but you know what? My journey doesn't stop there, it continues because now I say I'm employed there and I'm, it's giving back to the ones that's coming in through the doors and, you know, letting them know that mm -hmm. there's a better way of life. How was it to have uh, a group that could help you in that way. Amazing. Um, it's really amazing, especially um, my counselor. Yeah, she she's uh, taught me a lot, what I needed to do and what I needed to to build on uh, my my self esteem because my self esteem alone was mm -hmm. really low. Yeah, at that time, and she brought me to to a breaking point to to know what was really going on with Alfred. Yeah. Now, Alfred, uh, it sounds like you were able to hook up with a good, good amount of people who were able to see you as a person and walk you through this process. Yes, I have. And then when I left treatment, I ran a clean and sober house. And I've been in contact with uh, probation and all these other clean and sober houses. And um, they reached out at telling me that I had a good house, so they wanted to bring people there. And, you know, if I could help the world and bring everyone there at one time, I would. But, you know, it's very limited with people, yeah, that's coming mm -hmm. there. So... I just keep in touch with them. Once the once an opening happens, then I bring them in. Now, Michelle, is your experience similar? 
uh, of meeting nice people, helpful people at the, uh, at, at the organization? Oh yes, I've served at various capacities. I was once an employee of Hinamaka. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, and you were an employee there? A little over 10 there. years ago. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful organization. Um, it's, it's like the Ohana style of um, getting better, that wrap around in care and service. You know, once you open yourself up to the idea that, you know, for me it was knowing that I was the problem and the alcohol and, mm -hmm. and the drugs were just symptoms to the problem. You how know? were you organized, uh, how were you introduced to Hinamaka? Um, I live on the island of Maui mm -hmm. and um, having worked at other organizations, um, I was asked by their clinical director at the time on Maui to, to work with them. Um, you know, there's, there's a special thing about counselors who come into the field who have been a part of the program and there are people who haven't had the issues that we do as recovering alcoholics and addicts who do just wonderful work. Um, but I was asked to go and, and work with the organization at the time they had an outpatient program on mm -hmm. the island of Maui and I did. I, like Alfred, I feel like part of the process of getting clean and sober is is being able to give that back because we're told in the program that in order to keep what you have, you have to give it away. And so it's just another alcoholic and addict helping another, you know, it, it's that reciprocity of, of sobriety that, that we can live. You feel that you have an understanding, you've been there, and you want to share that with someone who might be going through something that you remember going through. There's that understanding, mm -hmm. yes, but for me, through my education, and um, there's, there's a piece of me now that I don't readily share where I've been. We walk the same walk, we talk the same language, but getting clean and sober is not about me anymore. Mm -hmm. It's about the consumer, about the client. And once, like I said, you know, we, we speak the same language, mm -hmm. so I don't say that, hey, I'm in recovery too, because mm -hmm. a person's ability to get clean and sober solely depends and relies upon their ability to do that for themselves. So as much help as you two, as much as uh, Hina Mauka can give, it still comes to the person inside wanting to go beyond this addiction. Mm -hmm. They want to recover. Hina Mauka is is a tool. It's a place, a safe space and place for someone to do that at. It has to come from the individual, otherwise l success will be limited, you know. Um, but it's not to say that if you don't succeed at treatment the first or second or third time that you're not successful. You just slowly chip at it, you know, just slowly chip at the ability to remain clean and sober. That's key. Anybody can get clean and sober. It's staying clean and sober. But. What are the challenges, uh, either one of you? Well, I, I like what you said, Michelle, and that we have to address that long term. Like you said that you can get clean at any, any time, but it's that continuing to be clean, mm -hmm. continuing to be uh, part of your ohana, your community, mm -hmm. without going and back into whatever made you an addict in the first place. What contributes to that? How can Ohana, how can the neighbors, how can just all these groups, uh, friends I see, how, how does that all contribute to staying uh, clean? Well, like for me, um, like I said, I, I do what's suggested by the program. Mm -hmm. And I use it to the best of my ability. I'm not perfect, but you know what? If I can maintain it and I can keep myself abstinence for, from what I used to do before, that I'm good at. The only way I know how is that um, I do my 12-step program and I do it with a sponsor. I have a sponsor. Um, you know, I kind of hit meetings, a lot of meetings, you know what I mean? And uh, mm -hmm. I do my 12-step program. Um, I use my support net and I use that on a regular basis, yeah. So to keep myself from, from falling back or falling short, I don't want to get into that place where I start thinking about a lot of things that have happened before. Because when you get complacent, you know, it really, it tears you up. So when you have, when you use that support net or mm -hmm. you use a sponsor, you, know, you call these people and, you know, tell them what's going on with you, you know. For me, I feel a lot better. And I can keep myself in that moment, you know what I mean? And I know where I, where I started and I don't want to go back there again. 
How about you, Michelle? Um, they say early in recovery you change everything. Yeah. People, places, everything. <clears throat> playgrounds, friends, um, it's being around positive people, being around people that support how I live today, um, telling people I don't drink, I don't use drugs, you know, just outing yourself so that the people that you're surrounded with will support the lifestyle that we choose today. And, and um, when you feel the urge, because it doesn't matter how long you've been clean and sober, you still have urges, mm -hmm. but it's knowing what to do, who you can call on when those urges happen. Uh, earlier in the program, uh, Alan was talking about, uh, you know, in different populations, there's a, in, you know, different increases in whatever substance is being abused. Is, are, have you two, with the people that you work with now, the folks who you're helping right now. What's their challenge today? What is the most challenging thing for them right now? Is it uh, you know, staying, uh, staying clean, or is this availability of, of, of substances that are around, uh, not having enough resources around? What, what do you see as the big challenge for someone that you may meet today says, I need your help? How is it different from your experiences? That's hard to measure. Everybody, mm -hmm. uh, every challenge is different for every individual, and it's hard to say what it could be mm -hmm. um, for the most part in terms of um, percentage and, and, and what population of people can't stay clean. Um, we've se I've seen a lot of success. I've, I've seen people go in and out, go in and out of using, but you know, every time they come back, they come back with something new something new that's that's good and something new that's bad but it's hard to measure what the reason is why people can't stay clean and sober but there's still people out there who will help them oh absolutely there's many resources um, on Oahu there's a lot of resources I live on the island of Maui and we mm -hmm. lack a lot of resources um, but there's many times when I do assessments and I do um, refer people to Oahu um, to get treatment because the lack of treatment, um, the access to treatment on our island of Maui. So, you know, there's resources, but there will always be limited resources in, in, this, in this, this type of um, issue that, that our community faces. They'll, we'll always lack. Okay. Um, Alfred, Michelle. Thank you very much for sharing your stories, and thank you so much for uh, you know continuing to work. I, I see that the both of you want to keep contributing and helping people. Thank you so much for stopping by. And for those of you who want to know more about uh, Hinamaka, they are online at hinamaka.org. Uh, you can check them out there, and there's an upcoming fundraiser too. And thank you very much for tuning in to Aloha United We Stand. Thank you.